It's our, a, our second special virtual meeting for the Enfield Town Council. Uh, it is available live on YouTube and also available at www.youtube.com slash watch TV, uh, you know, and, uh, equals UVC, G, D, L, N, Z, G, I, L, Q. And also this will be aired tomorrow on ETV channel 16. If we could, real, before we call roll call the special meeting, again, we could just have 10 minutes, excuse me, 10 seconds of, uh, I respectfully ask for a moment of silence for all those who have passed away from the pandemic and for everyone in town who's been affected by you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. If we could, a brief 10 second moment of silence. I'll have it please. be changed. Thank you all. We'll get to the regular meeting. Uh, Suzanne, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Hemler. Here. Councillor Kiner. Is, I know I saw him. Here. Thank you. Mayor Ludwig. Mayor Ludwig? I'm here. I'm sorry, I can't hear anything. I apologize. I'm sorry, it might be me. Councillor Mangini? Here. Councillor Muller? Here. Councillor Riley? Here. Councillor Sferazza? Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Here. Councillor Ungar? Here. 11 members are present, none are absent. I apologize, Suzanne. For some reason, I can't hear anything. Okay. Moving on, can you hear me? Nod. Okay, hi, I'm moving on to item two, discussion resolution regarding the public hearing for 2020-2021 budget. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, Where is the, uh, town Mr. Mr. the town council of the town of Enfield values the opinions and comments of its constituents. Whereas in accordance with chapter, chapter six, section four of the Enfield town charter, any elector or taxpayer may have an opportunity to be heard regarding appropriations for the ensuing fiscal year and for the purpose of being heard on issues of vital community importance and concern. Whereas the town council shall, shall conduct a virtual public hearing Wednesday, April 29, 2020 at 5 p.m. That will be available for viewing on YouTube. Whereas due to the public health emergency, public speaking will be by written testimony only and, elector, and electors or taxpayers may submit written testimony stating name and address on PH budget at, excuse me, to PH budget comments at enfield.org by 5 p.m. on Monday, April 27, 2020. Whereas all public comment received from the, by any Enfield electors or taxpayers will be posted to a link provided to the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the public hearing. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, that the order of business for the 2020-21 budget hearing arranged as follows. Mayor will recite the gross number of public comments received memorializing the fact that they were received by email in accordance with procedures provided by the Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B issued March 14, 2020, and Executive Order 7I issued March 21st, 2020. The mayor will confirm receipt and review of these public comments by each town councilor as part of their budget deliberation. After documenting receipt and review of public comment, the record for the record, the record for the public hearing will be closed by the council's budget deliberation should proceed forthwith prepared on April 20th, 2020 by the town manager's office. So moved. Motion, uh, seconded by Joe, Councilor Muller. Second. I guess seconded by Councilor <laughs> Deputy Mayor Suzak. I apologize, I cannot hear anybody. I don't know why. Well, I'll, I'll so proceed. Chris, I'll I think. turn it over to you. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult without. Straightforward, but uh, any, any uh, comments? It's gonna be an interesting meeting if Mike can't hear us. I don't know how he's going to know I'm speaking or when we stop. I think, Paul, you're going to have to try to work with him to get him uh, audio for us because I don't know how we're going to proceed in an effective manner. But I will just say that uh, we are adhering to our budget uh, timeline, as I outlined in my April 15th uh, budget submission to the council. Uh, budget directors this evening uh, will be available for questioning after the, the uh, special meeting. And then we will have the subject of this resolution on April 29th, the public hearing. I'll remind everybody that then May 6th and 7th, 
we will have council deliberations that subject to change and then thereafter we need to adopt the budget no later than may 20th so i will turn this over to the town attorney who has done a very um earnest job in trying to comport and comply with the governor's executive orders which have been coming out like popcorn and i turn it over to him to explain uh this resolution and how we will be proceeding for the public hearing a week from now approximately thank you sir uh attorney Kalberg, is you have the floor very well thank you uh mr mayor and mr town manager so i have with me the binder of executive orders now 7a through 7c c there are 29 of them i believe and we've reviewed them as they come out on an almost daily basis it has subsided somewhat but as indicated in the resolution the most the two most pertinent executive orders are 7b issued march 14 and 7i issued march 21 which suspend the in-person uh, open meeting requirements and which provide this process by which the town is allowed to receive written testimony by email. And so this procedure we've come up with um, is a procedure followed by many municipalities. We've conferred with our colleagues in the municipal bar. And uh, I would just encourage that when the written submissions come in, it will be made available or they will be made available to each counselor and uh, you just need to be sure to review those comments. And I would think that at the public hearing next week, after a record is made uh, with regard to the gross number of submissions, um, you could have your normal deliberations, and I think, after you close the uh, public record and make any comments you deem appropriate as members of the council. And uh, that's what <clears throat> we're doing to comply in this, uh, in the face of this uh, global pandemic as uh, authorized by the executive orders. Thank you, sir. Um, Chris, anything else before I open up the comments from the council? No. So I will last, last meeting we went left to right. We're gonna go right to left this meeting. So I'm gonna go to my right. We're sitting in the council chambers. Deputy Mayor Suzak, do you have any questions for attorney Talberg or, or the town manager? No, I do not at this time, but I do want to do want to verify that the budget is available to everybody online so they can review it. That is correct. As my understanding, it has been posted and we have um, posted it on our website. Uh, right. As and well. we always it's had a paper one available in the library. Um, are we doing anything for the um, people who have not? Do not possess technology? I don't believe it's going to be practicable to do it because all of our town buildings are closed. So we can give it some thought. And um, I don't know that people are going to be wanting to be handling it and picking it up in a public place, but we can we can consider it. We had not. We are going to post it. And for those, if they make a specific request, we could accommodate them. If anybody listening to this, Donna. Yeah, so maybe uh, they could pick up a copy at the police station if, you know, Yep, that's fine. We can make them available. We'll say that right now so everybody knows. We'll make a, a certain number available at the police department. And if anybody requests another form or a manner uh, or a place, we'll try to accommodate them as well. Thank you. Very Thank good you, point. Chris. Thank you. Councilor Muller, any questions? All set, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Ungar, any questions? I'm all set. Thank you. Councilor Hemler, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Uh, through the mayor to town manager, uh, it, it all comes up with the possible pending um, uh, referendum. I don't know if it's going to go to the public or not, but if it does, um, can it be worded in a way that if the economy does not get better, uh, we can uh, postpone the, the start of the work? You're, you're talking about for the later portion of the program, if we discuss uh, Donna's suggestion that she wanted information on the referendum for roads and roofs, is that what you're referring to? Uh, I'll, I'll take it that that's what he's referring to. Uh, I will ask John Wilcox to reach out to Barn Council to see if 
a referendum can be phrased in that manner that it will proceed unless there are certain caveats. My gut feeling is probably not. They're real sticklers, and I think it's got to be very clear and certain to the electorate when they're voting. Um, but we will make the inquiry, and we will have that available prior to your deliberations on May 5th or 6th. Thank you. We'll move on to Councillor Kiner. Any questions? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Sakala, any questions? Um, no questions, just a couple of comments. When we do post this um, either on our website or I know that when we put it, push it out on uh, Twitter and Facebook, can we make sure, can we provide a link to where people can find the budget? So if you're going to push this out, let's say on Twitter through the manager page or Facebook on the manager page, asking people if they have any questions to go ahead and email this email address, I'd like to have a link to where they can find the budget on the website, just to make everything easier for people. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I thought I saw a link across my email today. I think there's a link available and I'm sure Chris will make sure staff has that and can get that out there, right? Correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Also, I thought you had a couple questions, Councillor Scala. Oh, excuse me. Comments. No, it was a couple of comments. Yep. I'm good. Okay. Councilor Mangini. Nope. Good. Thank you. Councilor Riley. So to um, piggyback off of uh, Gina's comment, um, can we make sure that we put it in bold somewhere, the email address that people are going to be sending their comments to um, and have that available so everybody has um, easy access to that email address? Um, and then my other question was when all the receipts come in are we going to be reading them at the at the hearing out loud and then answering them is that how we're going to do it no uh the the requirement and i'll let the town attorney they will have an opportunity to have those statements made as part of the record if a council person would like to uh, make a comment or read a portion you'll have them in advance and we also just to be clear the the Law provides that you must be a resident or elector of the town uh, in order to opine. So we will look at these because clearly, just to be clear, uh, individuals from other towns outside of Enfield uh, don't have the um, option of commenting on our budget. But the town attorney will make sure we're in compliance. We'll have you the comments. We'll vet them. And then you will have them in advance. And we're not, if this is going to be a live, interactive, answering questions, going back and forth. It's to provide them an opportunity to make a comment. And I defer to the town attorney. Yeah, I'll just concur with what the town manager indicated. There is not a requirement in the executive orders to read all of the comments. Uh, we just need to create a record that they have been received as part of the record. And uh, it's simply what is uh, being done uh, in the face of this pandemic under these extraordinary times. Okay, and then those will be posted in the minutes of that meeting, all of the questions and comments about the budget. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, there'll be a record created at the public hearing next week with regard to the gross uh, number of, uh, you know, the, the number of uh, persons who submitted written testimony, but mm -hmm. not necessarily the specific comments that they all submitted, unless, for example, a counselor, upon having reviewed that testimony, wanted to make specific note of it in the record. And I could envision that, that happening. That is correct. It, this is okay. this is not an opportunity to be interactive. There's not going to okay. be previewing prior to it. We will simply post them and make it part of the record. Okay. I'm hoping for more comments. Last year, uh, Council, we had two people come to the public hearing and both of them spoke on matters other than the budget. So perhaps with people at home and being bored, maybe we'll get a little bit more of a, a robust response. I'm hopeful of that. And then we can make that known uh, after the public hearing closes as we proceed forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Sparazza, do you have any questions or comments? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, nor do I. I thought I heard one second. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak, you have another question? Yeah. Well, I think we ought to make clear to people that they, they need to give their name and address when they 
email or write in or however they deliver their comments, they still have to identify with their name and address. And I think they may, that may help with a little clarity that people are town members. And that, that should be in the record as well. Yeah, we're, we're the town attorney, we're ensuring that that is posted as we do at, at uh, previous public hearings, telling them what the requirements are to uh, give their opinion. Um, yes, if I may, I believe there's already a placeholder link on the town website in the budget area where the comments from the public uh, can be submitted. And I think that's where the budget link will be found as well. I defer to IT, but that's my understanding. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone? Once, on Suzanne roll call. Councillor Vasco? Four. Councillor Sakala. Is that Sakala? Yes. Oh, four. Councillor Hamler? Four. Councillor Kiner? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Riley? Four. Councillor Sferraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Susak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item three on the agenda, discussion resolution authorizing a town manager to enter into an ambulance staffing agreement for the town of Summers. Whereas due to the COVID-19 emergency, the town's EMS division would like to provide an ambulance to the Summers Fire Department. Whereas the ambulance will be crewed by appropriately trained and certified personnel from the Summers Fire Department. Now therefore be resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bronson is authorized to enter into and amend the ambulance staffing agreement with the town of Summers subject to approval by the town attorney on submitted April 21st by the town attorney's office. So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Mangini. Chris, uh, again, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have both the town attorney who did a very um, superb job in, in addressing and getting this MOU done in a very short period of time. And then I believe Chief Riggett is on as well to answer specific questions. I would simply say that we find ourselves in extraordinary times. As the resolution indicates, we have a number of town EMS personnel uh, who are out as a result of the COVID-19 virus who are being quarantined. We have obligations uh, and mutual aid agreements with surrounding towns, we to them and they to us, and one in particular is with Summers. We had a uh, call today with Commissioner Cook of DOC, Senator Kissel, Tom Arnone, Representative Hall, the mayor, myself, and Aaron, uh, because what we need to do is we have an extra ambul ambulance. They have extra personnel. Uh, they are a very fine service. Uh, in fact, I know Aaron had been involved in the training of their paramedics, so we're going to provide them with an ambulance. They will primarily help to assist in responding to DOC facilities. Um, the state has designated Northern and Osborne for COVID-19 uh, inmates. We have an obligation to respond there, and it will be quite an increase of, of calls. Uh, at when they started bringing prisoners in, for instance, uh, Friday, we had three inmates that needed to be transferred within a couple hour period of time. So this is a mutually beneficial collaborative agreement um, that we urge you to pass. It will help us in uh, fulfilling our obligation to DOC, but also it will allow Summers to backfill and assist in mutual aid calls back to the town of Enfield as well. So uh, I urge that you pass it and I open it up to questions for either the town attorney or Aaron, if counselors have them. Attorney Talberg, any comments? I wanna make sure you have a chance. Uh, I would just like to give credit to uh, Assistant Town Attorney Mark Serrato. We had a number of mini crises over the weekend and Monday morning, this became a hot issue that EMS needed addressed immediately. And so he dropped what he was doing to turn this around in literally hours. And so um, 
we just needed to act quickly to get this done and we'd urge uh, passage of this. Thank you, sir. Chief Riga, any comments if you're on the phone? Wanna make sure you have a chance. Um, no, Chris explained that um, well, uh, Summers will staff our vehicle and that vehicle will mainly handle Department of Corrections calls, be it Northern, Osborne, or a call Robinson in our town. Um, and that vehicle will also be available for Enfield calls if we are not. Um, so I, I would urge you to pass it. Um, it's been a really good um, relationship thus far. So, And Chief, if I can say before we open up the questions, fantastic job on this. You acted appropriately, quickly, and you, you got everyone, again, both Democrats and Republicans involved. So well done. Thank you. And thanks to the town attorney um, for getting that drafted so fast. So I will now open up to questions again, going right to left. Deputy Mayor Suzak, any questions or comments? I guess for me, my comment is this, um, you know, Summers and Enfield do support, you know, the DOC, uh, but under these kind of circumstances, and I guess um, increasing the burden of the municipalities that support but cannot sustain this kind of, I guess, um, times and um, situation. What is the state doing to supplement the needs of the DOC at the um, at the prisons to help with the COVID patients? I will um, re make make a report as we go forward. We will be having another call with the commissioner, Aaron, and I the Department of Health to address both the short-term and long-term needs uh, and resources uh, as a result of the uh, pandemic now, but also going forward to be perhaps a little more equitable for them to assist us. There used to be um, an ambulance out, up at the prison exclusively, as well as fire, and over the years that has changed. But we have um, given a list of our concerns to the commissioner. Uh, he has promised to talk to us tomorrow. We will address the short term and the long term. And I think that that conversation is best left for another day. OK, thank you, because I feel this is, this is an extraordinary burden onto these two towns. Thank it you. certainly it certainly is. And I appreciate that. And Representatives uh, Hall, Arnone, uh, State Senator Kissel and the mayor articulated that very strongly to the commissioner today. Right. I have spoke to Mike and I have spoke to Carol on this. And I think this is something that when the prison liaison meets, that I think the people who are overseeing and watching the changes in the prisons here need to be informed on this. And I think the town of Summers needs to be brought in on this so that they can work together as they're doing now to fully understand, you know, the impact of when the state um, really um, is putting an undue burden on the, the towns to service what really is their responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Muller, any questions or comments? No, I don't. Councilor Ungar, any questions or comments? No, I'm good, thank you. Councilor Hemler, any questions or comments? Not at this time, thank you. Councilor Bosco, any questions or comments? All set. Councillor Kiner, any questions or comments? No questions, thank you. Councillor Sakala, any questions or comments? Not right now, thank you. Councillor Mangini, any questions or comments? Yes, I do want to echo um, Deputy Mayor Suzak. I was thinking the same thing. I'm concerned about our residents in Enfield and you know the strain that it's gonna put on our people. Um, it is the state of Connecticut that is responsible for the DOC, not that we don't want to help. And I think it's great that we have that partnership with Summers, but I think I'd like to further explore how the state can come up with and take some of that burden off of us. Because if we're down already on staff, what's going to happen? Should we go down even farther? Are we going to get some help here in Enfield? And I think that's, that's a concern that we need to, um, you know, address and be cognizant of. Thank you. Thank you. Council Riley, any questions or comments? Uh, the only comment that I have um, would just be for, um, and I know it'll probably be addressed later, is just for the safety of the ambulance personnel who are transporting um, 
DOC um, residents um, just to keep them safe while they're doing transport. I hope they're providing some sort of additional guard or something in the vehicle with them. But that's the only comment that I have. Thank you for that concern. And yes, they do. Okay, good. Councillor Sparazzi, any questions or comments? No, I would just say that um, Attorney Talbert, the fact is that we have the uh, first responder license and OEMS um, license us to do medical calls. So really legally we have, this isn't an option for us. We need to respond to the best of our ability because of the licensing agreements we have with the state, correct? Uh, yeah, that's that's my understanding. And quite frankly, Monday morning when we heard about this, the initial reaction was almost do whatever you have to do. Uh, even if we don't have the written agreement in place, the ambulances have to respond. And this is just formalizing, uh, I think, what we had to, the action that had to be taken. Okay. Thank you. I'll set, Mayor. Okay, I'll be brief. Again, I just want to let everyone know, our, you know, Chief, Chief Riggett, our town staff, Chris, town attorney, you know, our state delegation, Representative Hall, Representative Arnone, State Senator Kissel, all work together to, to bring this, you know, as quickly to a resolution. I also want to thank the Summers Fire Department for being a good partner with us. And again, as we've talked about, rising waters raise all ships. And I think, you know, again, Chief Chief Regan and her staff really came up with a very, very uh, comprehensive proposal in a very short amount of time. Yeah, you know, I don't know, Chris, I mean, again, I think, I know we've had some, you're going to have some further conversations, but I think, you know, the town acted appropriately and quickly once we realized kind of what we were, what was going on. I don't know if you want to have any closing comments. No, I, I, I echo all of the concerns and, and um, we are addressing those with DOC. I work on an hourly basis, I think, with poor Chief Riggett. She's done an outstanding job yep. um, trying to manage this. We also have other contingency plans and backup plans that we are discussing every day. Um, we did a press release today so our residents would know that we have really strong support for mutual aid of our surrounding towns, Summers, East Windsor, uh, the Ambulance Service of Manchester, um, and uh, together, we're going to make sure we have continuity, ser continuity of services for our uh, residents. So we will continue to adapt and be flexible. And uh, we, I know Aaron and the EMS staff appreciates the, the support. And every time a counselor uh, sends me a message uh, sending their good wishes uh, to our staff, I share that with Aaron. She has been letting them know how much we appreciate um, the outstanding job they're doing. And let's Let's just remember, I mean, they are getting into the back of ambulances with people who are very ill with the COVID virus, who are exhibiting some of the worst symptoms in a very closed and confined space. And uh, the PPEs are of little comfort uh, uh, under that uh, type of situation. So I commend them. I thank them. And they have our good wishes and uh, our respect. Well said, Chris. And again, I mean, Chief, Chief Reagan and her staff, she has handled herself professionally. She's been calm in a very difficult situation. And um, again, I think the town is very proud of her and her staff. She's handled this very, very professionally. And uh, again, the town, the town is a benefit for. And uh, Suzanne, agree. roll call, please. Councillor Bosco? Well. Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Hemler? Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item four, discussion resolution. Resolutions to implement executive order 7S. Whereas due to the COVID-19, oops, sorry, excuse me. Whereas on March 20th, 2020, Governor Lamont issued a declaration of public health and civil preparedness emergency proclaiming a state of emergency throughout the state of Connecticut as a result of the corona disease 2019, also known as COVID-19. And whereas the Governor Lamont issued executive order number 
7S on April 1, 2020, and under section, section 6 requires municipalities by vote of its legislative body to participate in at least one of the, of the two established programs, A, a tax deferment program, and or B, low interest rate program. And whereas the tax deferment program can provide up to 90 days relief for certain payments due by taxpayers for tax and sewer fee accounts, and whereas the town must inform the Office of Policy and Management, also known as OPM, no later than April 25th, 2020, which programs the town will participate in. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Infield Town Council hereby selects to participate in the tax deferment pro program under Section 6B of the Executive Order Number 7S, and the Director of Finance and a su Supervisor of the Assessment and Revenue Collection are hereby authorized to carry out all such requirements and implementation of the program. Submitted on April 20th, 2020 by the Director of Finance. We have a motion. So moved. By Deputy Mayor Suzak, Secretary of Council, Dean Jeannie. And Chris, or do I want to turn over to John? Is John on the phone? Yeah, I'll just give you the background. This is a matter of critical importance to the town. Uh, the town attorney, again, has been um, weighing in and advising on the executive orders. Uh, and John and Della have uh, researched this from their working groups, reached out and seen what other communities are doing. And clearly, uh, the ability for us to uh, rely on our taxes to come in at the appropriate time to fund government, as I've said, is, is crucial. Um, so I will turn it over to John. He has not only an explanation briefly, but an exp uh, a recommendation. And uh, Della is available as well if she'd like to make a few comments. I don't know if Jim would like to after, and then, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, we would welcome questions. John? Right. And John, sorry, real quick, Chris, there's actually two resolutions. I apologize. One for the tax deferment and one for the low interest rate program. So it depends which way we go. I may have to re redo the resolution. Okay. Yep, for the record. Sorry, go ahead, yep. John or, or Della. Okay. Um, the, um, the executive order... Um, says that the town is to um, ha has to select one program or at least one program or can implement both programs. So uh, basically, I put two resolutions in there. One can be then uh, the the um, the first one was the deferment program. Um, I do not recommend that program. Um, so that, but but I didn't know how else to apply it, whether to, uh, you know, so that one would be then voted down and then the interest rate program would be uh, accepted. Um, that that was my my intention okay. on that. Yeah. Thanks, um, John. So, so uh, Suzanne, what I'll do, since I've already read the first resolution before, maybe I'll read the second and then we'll vote on both. Is that, how, is that work for you, Suzanne, to make sure we're following Robert's rules? Well, we'll have to have separate votes. Okay, so just we'll stay on this resolution first, then we'll go to the second one. Okay. Okay, does that work? Yes. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Go ahead, John, I apologize. Go ahead, John. Okay. The director of Finance, John Wilcox, sorry, folks. Go ahead, John. So the um, deferment program, um, it was, um, that would, it, it would um, apply to, Taxpayers, uh, residential taxpayers who have been impacted by the COVID virus, um, and and their their income has been reduced by 20% or more, um, or business for for a business taxpayer, it would be their business has been impacted by 30% or more. Uh, they would have to submit an application to the town by July 1st. Um, and having, you know, they're having to submit whatever kind of information they would need to substantiate that, um, you know, unknowing we have about 55,000 total accounts um, just for the taxes. Um, so we do not know what percentage of, uh, you know, with, with about uh, 23,000 eligible tax uh, um, working empl employed personnel in in uh, in Enfield, um, you know, if, if we have an income an unemployment rate of ten percent, that would be a large number of uh, applications that we would have to, to. So we don't think that that's the uh, the um, the way to go. Also, in addition, 
um, that would that could uh, create a delay in tax receipts, which would cause us to have to uh, take other measures to um, to to fund the uh, operation of the government. So. Um, it, our recommendation was to use the low interest rate program. Thank you, John. For any questions that anyone has. So, and Della, sure would you, you like to add in yeah, before ahead, people ask questions on that, please? Yes, OPM has created an application. It's available on the OPM website. The um, administration would have to determine what criteria we would utilize to determine if someone would be eligible. Some of the things they've said is that they would have to show us the information from their employer that they're no longer receiving funds, that they're filed for unemployment. Um, if they're renting a property, i.e. in a two family or an in-law, they'd have to show where in fact they have not received the monies and sign the affidavit. Uh, it's kind of difficult unless it goes across the board to every single taxpayer to maintain the program for the deferred with an application because there would have to be documentation to go with it. That would be a little bit difficult when we're not sure who would be eligible. Um, there's many people who have more than one property, one that they reside in, one that they may rent out to parents, family member, or uh, just to someone else. And we wouldn't have any way of reaching out to those people to say, there's an application process you only have until July 1. If you don't get it in by July 1, you will no longer be eligible for the deferred program. Mm -hmm. Th thank you, Della. Uh, Attorney Talberg, anything? Um, my only comment is about uh, the, sens the sensitive time uh, crunch. There is a deadline of the 25th, uh, so there needs to be a decision tonight on this. Uh, it's really a question of finance, so I defer to uh, the finance Got folks, it. which program, but it must be, uh, you don't have much time to debate it. Uh, Thank tonight. you, sir, appreciate it. Yeah. So Chris, I will open up the questions and you, unless you have anything else. No, I I, um, I concur after uh, hearing John and Della's uh, recommendations, I, I concur with their recommendation. So so the first, this is right now, there's two resolutions to be clear for everyone in public. One for the tax deferment, which we're, we're talking about now, the second one will be for the low interest loan, which our staff recommends. So this one, again, they're not recommending. We're opening up to questions, moving right to left again. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'm all set. I'm just asking the people that as soon as if they can pay their taxes, do. Thank you. Councilor Muller. All set. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. I just wanted to make a, a one comment. The federal government deferred all our taxes from April to de July. They don't require any type of application form proving that you don't have the funds or you're unemployed, right? But as a local town, we would have to require that. Right. We, we uh, I mean, uh, we're not experts in what the federal government is doing, Lori, but in regard to this, this is, uh, we're just following the language and that's a mandate that the governor has included in his executive order, so we have to comply with it. Okay. All set? Councilor Hemler, any questions? Um, no questions. I'm, um, I mean, we definitely want to help the taxpayers, but at the same time, they still want the garbage picked up, so we've, we've got to make sure that, uh, you know, the funds are, are there for um, to run the town, so I'm I'm definitely more in favor of the low interest resolution and not with the tax deferment. Thank you, Councilor Thanks. Bosco. Thanks. Well, I would love the tax deferment, but I believe that uh, it's going to cause a lot of issues and confusion between the taxpayers and our own staff, and I think it's going to be a logistical nightmare. And uh, just cause failure. So again, I'm, as much as I would like to do it, I think that uh, I'm going to go with the other one also. So I won't be in favor of this one. Thank you, sir. Councilor Kiner. Yes. Am I on? Okay. Yes, sir. You, um, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just a couple of comments. First of all, to uh, Della. Della, thank you so much for that, for the email. Uh, you expressed everything so, uh, so well and so understandable. And I, I appreciate that. Um, 
I'm leaning toward the deferment program. If, if I read this correctly, uh, there are two deferment programs. One would defer taxes until October for everyone, and the second deferment program would require an application. I, that's right, I, I presume. And I understand that should I, the deferment program go through, and my, my sense is hearing for uh, other council people speak that it probably will not be voted unfavorably. Um, obviously, it's going to cause a concern for the town, but I'm also looking at the trauma that many of our residents are going through. Many are unemployed. Uh, many of them are going to find it very difficult uh, paying these taxes. And I, I know it'll create a hardship for the town. It'll only be temporary until October comes and then payment will be made. So I am leaning toward the, uh, toward the uh, deferment along with the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the interest rate, the low interest rate program as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sakala, please. Um, thank you. Uh, I mean, I guess this is where I have a hard time is I guess I need more of a reason than it's going to be difficult and going to be hard to implement to not vote in favor of it. Um, there are people in this town that are really going to benefit from a deferment and from the lowest, the low interest rate one. And so I, I find it hard to vote against it. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I misunderstood something. Besides it being difficult to implement for the town staff and possibly, I mean, it's going to be hard and it's going to be a hardship for the town in general if we're not going to get that revenue in taxes. But I, I just, I'm not hearing another reason not to vote in favor of both of the programs. So I, I guess that's where I'm standing. Thank you. Th thank you, Council Sakala, Council Mangini. Yes, thank you. I guess uh, my um, concern, I, I'm a little confused by both of these quite frankly, but the deferment program applies to all taxpayers or it could apply to all taxpayers and that's not being recommended by staff. The low interest program does apply to all taxpayers and that is being applied or you know supported by staff. But my question is do we could we should we support both programs or do you have to choose one over the over the other? I think it, you know it's confusing in itself uh, but it, is there a hybrid between the two or or are we being asked to vote for one and not the other that's where i'm confused i will i will defer to john uh, you could do both but there's no hybrid you can't be changing because the specifics and the mandates are we have to follow what the executive orders outline but the recommendation of the staff is not to uh for the reasons stated uh, accept the deferment and go with the next resolution. And I, I understand I wouldn't be um, saying we shouldn't do it because it would represent work or a caseload increase to the staff. But I think, unfortunately, we can see that with many of these programs that have been done so quickly, and as Della said with OPM, the application process, uh, what they have to submit, it's not just going to be a logistical nightmare. It's probably going to be delayed. People are going to be frustrated. They're going to be outraged that they didn't, you know, file this and they have to file something else and how come I, I, if there's 2000 applications which seems to be that probably percentage at least um we can add additional staff and we would certainly do that if it would behoove our residents but i just think that it's going to be like a lot of these programs the state had good intentions in passing it but the devil's in the details that we're left with uh to try to implement and figure out and i just think it's it's going to be a disaster in the making. So for that reason and for clarity and for not confusing and upsetting and uh, frustrating our residents further and giving them greater anxiety, I think it's a lot simpler, cleaner, and more uh, easily implemented uh, and beneficial to our residents to be very clear and offer the second. I think the first one is going to be fraught with confusion 
and it's going to create a lot of sen- uh, ill sentiment, I think, and frustration from the public. But I, I defer to John and Adela. Um, then, then let me just ask this final question. So the program, the low interest program, does in fact apply to all taxpayers across the board. Is that correct? Yes, it does. It applies to all taxpayers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Council Riley, any comments or questions? My only comment is it would be great to be able to defer taxes for 90 days because it would definitely help a lot of people out. Um, But I would hate for the town to get in a worse situation, worst case scenario. We can't pay, you know, salaries or our bills or whatever. And then we have to take out a loan to to pay for it. So I don't want to get in that predicament either. And if the low interest rate applies to everybody and you don't have to, you know, fill out an application for it and it's just automatic, then at least that's some sort of reprieve for people. So I would lean more towards that one than the total deferment. Thank you. Council Spraza. Well, I don't want to sound like the given all this bad news, but the reality is this. Since March 1st, 392,000 Connecticut residents have filed for unemployment. So that uh, 23,000 working people, Mr. Wilcock referred to, and a 10% unemployment uh, is probably going to be way more than that. And so we're going to be over maybe between two and 3,000 applicants if we went with this program. On top of that, and let me just clarify something, there's no question that we need to get some relief to our residents. Um, You know, not only because of the unemployment situation we're in, but you know, last year in the state of Connecticut, our economy in Connecticut only grew 1.6%. We were 33rd out of 50 states. And on top of that, there's an unfunded, and I bring this up at almost every meeting, there's an unfunded pension balance of $125 billion facing the state of Connecticut for municipalities, teachers, and state workers. When you're facing those deficits and all the state revenue that the state's not collecting in state income tax and casino money, I'm not optimistic at all that when the time comes for revenue sharing, we're going to get what we're going to get. So at the same time, I want to provide relief to our residents, but the most important thing Mr. Wilcox said, if we went with this plan, we wouldn't have any money potentially till October 1st when people would have to pay. And unfortunately, we have bills in July, August. People need to get paid. We don't have the cash flow to do it. So I won't be supporting this program, but I will 100% be supporting the um, low interest, uh, the 3% a year, which just comes out to 0.25 a month. Um, that'll be a little bit of relief, but we still have to maintain services. So um, I won't be supporting this. I most definitely be supporting the next one though. Thank you. Thank you, Council Peraza. Again, you, well, well said, well said. Um, I agree, I will be supporting the, the uh, low interest rate. I'd love to give people a break. Because I know a lot of people have lost their jobs, and I know the economics of this situation is is as bad or could be even worse than what we're dealing with currently. But I think we have we're still doing the town is still functioning, the town's still doing its work, still picking up the garbage. Our police are still <laughs> keeping the town safe. We just heard some of the situation with our EMS. The town is still working, and I agree. If we don't collect revenue for a certain amount of time, you know, we, then we're gonna have to start dealing with alternatives. Where do we take a loan out to pay people? We start infecting our bond rating, all the things that we built to have the town in a position that it is. So I agree with you, Council Sparaza. Um, again, I won't be supporting this either. Any other questions from anyone? Yes, I have a question. Um, Councilor Ungar, you have your hand. Yeah, my Is question that? is, yes, I'm wondering what's the percentage of people that pay the lump sum in July versus the rest of the residents that pay throughout the whole year. So how much money are we talking? Um, I'd like to know what that, what those numbers are. I was wondering if John knows, because it's not that 
people are waiting for the whole town to pay their lump sum in July. A lot of people are paying all year. Mr. Mayor, if I could, I have the answer to that question, if I could answer. Go ahead. 92% uh, of our residents pay their taxes in July, 5% pay in August, and 1% pays in September. So between those three months, it's 98% of our taxes come in in those three months, broken down just that way, 92, 5, and 1. Thank you, Councillor Sporazic. Um, just a little uh, clarification Wilcox? on that. Uh, um, the taxes are billed in are billed in two installments. Okay, and not for, for business, personal property, and real estate. Motor vehicle is billed one hundred percent in July. So of the taxes that are due um, in July, typically we get we receive the ninety two percent, the five percent, and and the 1%, then we do another billing in January for the second half of the real estate and business personal property, plus any motor vehicle supplemental pay bills that need to be paid. Um, so when, when I did my analysis on that, um, at least 50% are paid through escrow accounts, they we would get collect we would only get about a probably a quarter of our of our real estate billing which is the overwhelming majority of our uh, of our tax base um is, is we would collect about 25 percent of our annual taxes in uh july that's that was my uh my my, my rough calculation 25 percent. so do the mortgage companies hold on to this tax money and then they pay it all in july the mortgage companies pay the installment amount in July. And then and think about when you're paying your mortgage, you are funding your, you're paying your principal and interest plus your escrow payment. And that builds up an amount for them to pay each time an installment is due. So you collect enough to pay your, your July installment or the mortgage companies collect enough to pay their July installment. It is paid. Then you're paying your mortgage company July through November and December, and then they issue the, the January installment to the town. So they're not holding on to money that, that they have. It's, that's the way the, the whole process uh, works. Thank you, John. All set, Councilor Ungar? So we still get, we'll still get that money from them in July then? We are supposed to still receive the, the money from the escrow, but that's only about 50% of our taxpayers. The rest of them would have to pay and issue checks, you know, like, like you know, for, for the, well, they'll, they'll receive their tax bill and they will issue a check to pay for it or go online and pay for it or something like that. Okay, so it's about 50%. Okay. Okay. All set? Yes, thank you. Councilor Bosco has raised his hand. You have you have the floor. Well, I guess John answered my question. I mean, even though as good as this program sounds about giving the uh, the abatement for three months, most people are not going to be able to uh, enjoy that because the bank already took their money and put it away. So you know, it's not going to help the majority of the people. It's probably going to help the businesses but um, probably a majority of the regular homeowners have a mortgage and their money's coming out in escrow, which it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So uh, I, I think the second one is a much better deal. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bosco. Councilor Mangini, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Just for clarification, can, can we as a council support both the low interest and the deferment programs, number one, and then secondly, Town, I'm understanding that uh, in the deferment under the deferment program, towns can elect to have the program apply to all taxpayers. Is that is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. You got it. Okay, go ahead, Councilor Connor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a, uh, a question. When we vote on 
this deferment program. There are actually two separate programs within this. One is to defer taxes to all residents. The other is to defer taxes on those people who apply. So is that right? So I'm not sure if when we vote on this particular resolution, are we voting on both of those segments or one or the other? I don't know, Chris. I believe you're voting down that there's two programs, even though the first one contains those two options. I defer to Jim and John, but you're going to take a vote on the first one. There would be no deferment as we've, as we've been discussing, and then you'll move on to the low interest program. All right, but I, I'm not sure I understand the the vote that we're going to be taking on this first resolution is the, the, the vote for the deferment program, but are we voting to give a deferment on all to all taxpayers, or are we voting to give a deferment on a selected group of taxpayers who are going to be applying for this particular program? I know it's almost a moot point because as I listen to the, the interchange the exchange of comments here, I mean this it's gonna be defeated anyhow, but I would like to know how we're voting on this. I defer to John and, and Jim, but I, I think as it reads, if you vote it down, you're voting down that and within it, there are two options. So I, I think you're correct. You know, when you vote it down, I think the rest really is moot. Whether you were going to pick right. one or two, we would have had to cross that, but we're not going to if it doesn't pass. Okay. And we'll move on to the low interest rate. That's my understanding. Okay, thank but you, Jim, Chris. Or, I, I agree you're, with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I thank Lori for her question. I think that that was very illuminating. Uh, it brought forth, uh, I think, a really good point about mortgage companies representing half and that those persons wouldn't be able to be eligible anyway. So I thank you, Lori, for that question. I think it elicited some important information. Deputy Mayor Suzak, you have your hand up. Yeah, I guess my comment is on the, the, the blanket deferment. I, I would not be in favor of a blanket deferment, but if you would like to have an application process, I would be in favor of that. The only thing that I dislike about that is that people will have to meet a criteria that would be, you know, 20%, 30%, all this stuff. And you could have a person who, you know, this low interest one would benefit them substantially. And they only have, they have a 19%, you know, which is, you know, devastating in itself. So I think to, you know, go with the low interest, it's, it really will help everyone and everyone can assess their own need as to whether they feel that, you know, paying their taxes in a later date would substantially help them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other comments? Going once. Hearing none, uh, roll call, Suzanne. Councillor Bosco. Against. Councillor Sakala? For. Councillor Hemler? Against. Councillor Kiner? For. Mayor Ludwig? Against. Councillor Mangini? For. Councillor Muller? Against. Councillor Riley? Against. Councillor Sraza? Against. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Against. And Councillor Undergeyer. Against. We have three in favor, eight against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item B, low interest rate program. Whereas on March 20, 2020, Governor Lamont issued a declaration of public health and civil preparedness emergency proclaiming a state of emergency throughout the state of Connecticut as a result of the coronavirus disease 2019 in parentheses COVID-19, and whereas the Governor Lamont issued executive order number 7S on April 1, 2020, under section six requires municipalities by vote of its legislative body to participate in at least, excuse me, one of the two established programs, the tax deferment program and or low interest rate program. Whereas the low interest rate program can provide up to 90 days relief for certain interest payments due by taxpayers for tax and sewer use accounts. Whereas the town must inform the Office of Policy Management, OPM, no later than April 25th, 2020, which programs the town will participate in. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Infotown Council hereby selects 
to participate in a low interest rate program under Section 6B of the Executive Order 7S and the Director of Finance and the Supervisor Assessment and Revenue Collection are hereby authorized to carry out all such requirements in the implementation of the program prepared on April 20th, 2020 by the Director of Finance. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Do I have a second? Second. By Councilor Riley. Uh, Chris, I know I don't, I think we just talked through it, but I don't know if there's anything else, anyone else? I think that um, we did, yeah. but if there are any questions, John and Della yeah. are available. So I will again go right to left, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. No, you have any comments or questions? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Um, <laughs> Do you know, this is what happened when we worked am. through the dinner hour. <laughs> Um, no, I, you know, for me, I think this allows people to make their own decision without having to go through an application process that could be um, overbearing to the residents and very time consuming. Thank you. Councilor Muller, any questions? No, all set. All set. Councilor Ungeyer. I'm all set. Thank you. Councilor Hemler. I'm definitely in favor of this. I think it's a, an opportunity for anybody and everybody if they if they so choose. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bosco. I'm all set. Councilor Kiner. You know, I much I much would rather have had the uh, deferred program go through, but uh, the old saying, a half a loaf is better than nothing at all, and this will help our um, our, our people. So yes, I I support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sakala. Um, like the last one, I will support this one as well. Thank you, Councilor Mangini. Yes, I will support this program. Uh, what I especially like about the way this is written up, the um, explanation is that it applies to all taxpayers and it uh, benefits taxpayers. At this juncture in our life, um, we need to extend a helping hand to everyone. Um, you know, to soften the, the burden as it's gonna come. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Riley. I'm all set, thank you. Councilor Sparraza. Well, like other councilors have said, I wish we could have done both. But just so this is really crystal clear, I checked into this speaking to Mr. Wilcox earlier this week. Here's the bottom line, we can't get away from this. If you had voted for the deferment, we don't have the money to pay our payroll for August and September. We just don't have the cash. So it was never an option. If it was, I would have given both because people need relief, but we have to pay our bills and, and we have to pay our labor force and we didn't have the money to do it. And that's why I voted against that one and I certainly, support this one based on what we've seen and some of the economic realities I've given you tonight. I wish we could do more, but I will certainly be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Just one really quickly, just to yeah, follow ahead. up on, um, thank you. Um, just to follow up on your statement, Carl, although I didn't talk to John Wilcox about this, my assumption, and it's just an assumption, so I could be wrong, is this is why we have fund balance. We could have reached in that fund balance and paid those bills because this is an unprecedented event, like everybody says, and it's an emergency. And that's why we have fund balance. Thank you. Uh, can I respond, Mayor? Mike? Go ahead, Council Sparazzi. Um, That's correct, Gina. We, we probably could have done that. And I asked John specifically, are there options, ways to do it? And he talked about we could go to our bond council and take out loans. It would cost us some money. Um, the rainy day fund you refer to, we're going to be tapping into that uh, to balance this budget this year, I hope. I mean, that's what the manager has proposed, to keep it at a zero increase. And if we start to keep tapping further into it, I don't want to endanger the amount of money we need to keep in there so our bond rating doesn't go up because when you go to borrow money, if that bond rating's up, we're paying a higher interest rate. So I did explore that with John, and uh, that's what he what he said is that we just uh, don't have the cash to do it. And if you don't want to hit that fund, we could have taken a loan out. It would have required a referendum, and I don't think we have the time to uh, do that. 
but more importantly, I don't think we have the money to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, roll call, please. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Mike. Mike, oh, you gotta raise you guys gotta raise your hands. So I, I did raise ahead, my Tom. hand. Uh, I raised my hand the computer and I raised my hand. Hey, uh, I, I got a question on uh, this this deferment. Is this deferment at, at the, uh, the low percentage rate only for three months? Or is this deferment going to be for if on the fourth month they don't pay it? Is it going to go back to the 1.5? Just to make it clear to everyone that they, you know, if, if they defer it and it does revert back to 1.5, that they're only going to get this uh, tax break for three months. So I don't know what happens in month four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. So that's I just want a clarification on that. John can answer, but I think uh, in the resolution it says that the low interest rate program can provide for up to ninety days relief for certain interest payments. So Joe, John, you can uh, confirm that, but I believe the councilman is correct. It's for ninety days. Um, it is for 90 days, but it also applies to sewer use bills that are issued in uh, from from April through June. Um, so each of those bills would would receive uh, three months worth of uh, a lower interest rate. If they're not paid within the three month period, then the interest rate does refer back to the original rate. Thank you. And that's, also, what I just wanted to, that's what I wanted to make sure people knew that don't kick the can down the road a long time because you're going to be paying full price after a certain time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call please, Suzanne. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Hemler? Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sarraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item five, budget discussions. First up, the police department. Um, the budget, uh, the manager presented this budget last week, a week ago, and it was sent to all counselors over, I think, on Friday afternoon or Friday evening. And Chris, um, I, I'm not sure if Chief is on. Yeah, what I'll say, uh, Mr. Mayor, I will just say that the, the uh, budget presentation um, that I presented is online. I would recommend that any residents that want to see uh, the budget presentation uh, go there. You are correct. Uh, the combined budget uh, proposed for 2021 is $138,911,188. That is a percentage increase of 1.36%. However, by use of the, uh, um, the fund balance and other uh, cost-saving measures, it will result in a zero zero percent tax increase the mill rate will remain the same uh, from this year uh, to the next and as we've done in past years uh, we have an opportunity which is before you now uh, for the council to ask uh, specific directors about the budget so for those who want to look at the budget presentation please go on line and also as we've said there would be the links to this uh, talk and also to the whole budget the entire budget uh, will be online or is online, I believe, tonight uh, for people to see, and they can then get on a granular level for each department. But what we're going to do, there aren't going to be per se presentations because it is a zero percent increase for all departments. So it is essentially the same budget as last year. So for interest of time and clarity, as we did last year, we're going to go with the top, well, I should say the largest uh, um, departments uh, that represent the largest uh, budgets in the town. And they are simply going to be saying hello, and then we will open it up to questions. And first up is uh, Chief Alric Fox of the Enfield Police Department. Good evening, ladies well, and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to join you. Uh, in accordance with the instructions provided by Mr. Bromson, I've submitted a budget request 
for the Enfield Police Department that's consistent with last year's budget. There were several items on the operational side that were increased costs that were beyond our control. We've offset those costs within the operating budget by corresponding cuts in other areas. Uh, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you might have. Welcome, Chief. Uh -huh. And again, we're going right to left. Welcome, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Um, well, we still have money in the budget for the walking patrols in Thompsonville. Yes, we will. Okay, is there anything in your budget that you feel, uh, I don't know, there's always things that you want and there's things that maybe you think we could do without. And I, you know, I hate to think things are gonna get worse, but are there any things in there that you may feel aren't as efficient as they possibly could be? Uh, I wish I could offer you more. We had built-in expenses in several areas that were beyond our control. And even those I needed to find cuts and that was difficult. Um, you know, the salaries, the, the healthcare costs, those fixed, those fixed items uh, account for, you know, 93, 94%. Everything else is operational. It's a small amount. It's very difficult to find uh, much savings in there. We have trimmed beyond what we can trim. Thank you. All set. Councilor Muller, any questions? Chief, I had a quick question. Uh, vehicle replacement, how is that coming along? Is that your request? I see Mr. Bromson has lit up. Uh, sir, do you want to handle that or should I? Well, we basically, we are going to be bringing online from last year, 10 new vehicles. As I Thank indicated you. in my presentation, uh, there obviously, well, not obviously, but there is a vehicle replacement program calling for replacement each year. But across the board, we put a halt to that this year, understanding we are bringing on previous lease uh, in, in increases and we'll have 10 new vehicles coming online. But no additional ones are listed in this budget for police or public works or for anybody else. The only one vehicle, and it's not a, a complete vehicle replacement, is the chassis replacement for, for one and fuel ambulance. Thank you. All set, sir. Councilor Thank Engar. you. Uh, no, no questions at this time. Okay. Councilor Hemler. Um, great job, um, Mr. Uh, Manager, uh, in, in preparing it. I went through the whole budget on the weekend. Um, I just have one question with the police budget. There's a line in there for uh, travel for 7250 and I'm just wondering that uh, I don't object to it being in there because just because it's in there doesn't necessarily mean you're going to use it. Um, but it just seems like this would be the year that there wouldn't be any travel. I will let the chief respond to that. We've cut uh, across the board all travel except for mandatory um, reaccreditation and retraining that we're required to do. There are a couple okay. of obligations that we have for travel the chief can address, but across the board, including the police department, there is no extraneous or discretionary travel. Uh, and the chief could respond to that uh, because we obviously took that to heart and we, we actually reduced it all last year and we kept it at a zero this year, except for the minimal. And I think one of them is, uh, or the chief can address it. There's no travel that's undertaken without the town manager's approval. I can tell you that anything that can be done for travel, uh, for training in state is done in state. But there are certain recertifications and programs, accreditation issues, uh, our polygrapher, our, 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 uh, our canines. There are certain programs that are only available out of state. And we try to hold them to the absolute bare minimum. But in order to keep skill sets up, sometimes they do have to travel for that. Okay. All right. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. I'm good. Thank you. Councilor Kiner, any questions or comments? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Chief Fox, good to see you tonight. Thank you, sir. Um, just one quick question on personnel services. I'm looking at the uh, uh, police services for the line items number 51, your uh, 2020 revised budget for uh, under protection of life and property was $9,025,674. And the proposed budget uh, is $8,655,000 uh, and, and change, a difference of $370,000. I, I, I guess I can just 
be very succinct in, in, in my question and ask you, um, are we putting anyone, are we putting our citizens at risk at any way by reducing personnel costs by that amount of money? I appreciate the question. I do not believe we are. We're going to maintain our staffing level at 95 where it currently is, and I am comfortable with that. So where, where are we making the cuts for the $370,000? So there were a couple of areas that are minor tweaks to that. Um, we have brought on, as you're aware, some newer officers because of a, a flux of retirements that we had about a year, year and a half, two years ago. And the more junior officers are getting paid less than the more senior officers. When we amplify that by the number of new hires, there's a savings between the low end of the pay scale and the high end of the pay scale, um, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 dollars per. That accounts for part of it. There's also a downgrade, if you will, from one detective that we morphed into a patrolman. There's also the elimination of the deputy chief and effectively the replacement of that position with a patrolman that accounted for a savings of about $41,000. Sure. There also, there also appears to have been a um, uh, an over-calculation within the current budget of a couple of the positions that were uh, that did not need to be funded as high as they were in the current budget, and that's part of the offset as well. Uh, I spent a great deal of time on this. I spoke to the assistant town manager and Mr. Wilcox today to make sure that everyone had a comfort level. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to be in a situation a year from now where we didn't have uh, payroll money for the employees. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate the response. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Sakal. I have no questions for the Chief. Thank you. Well, so, okay, Councilor Mangini. I just want to make a comment, Chief. Thank you. Um, with you at the helm, uh, my comfort level is, is certainly there, um, you know, with you, you're doing a, a wonderful job and we're getting, a, I'm getting a lot of good responses. And I just wanted to say thank you to your work and the work of the police department. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. The credit goes to the men and women. Councilor Riley. I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Council Sparazza. Chief, I just have one comment, uh, maybe two. Um, you know, every night we watch the news and they talk about uh, practicing social distancing, to be six feet away, make sure you have a mask on. And the residents by and large are doing that. And we're, this is such a highly contagious virus we have. And I always think about our first responders, the doctors and our nurses, our EMS, um, our firefighters when we need their help. But also, you know, it's probably stating the obvious, but there are times, even in times of pandemics, when our officers can't keep social distance, there are times that they're going, and they do, and they have been having to arrest people custodially when it's necessary. And you know what, I just am so grateful to the officers that that put themselves in that position because it's not just their health they have families they go home to and i think uh not that i thought anything different but our department i don't know where we'd be without it and my second comment is i know having served where you serve there probably are programs and different things that would enhance us to going forward um in light of the economic situation in this unprecedented crisis we're in. Um, we have to keep our budget to zero, but as the year unfolds, speaking for myself, Chief, if, if things, when the dust settles, and, and for all our departments and all different things, um, I would be willing to listen to see what we could do as time goes on. But for now, um, I applaud the job you're doing. And, uh, you know, I probably just said something that everybody already knows. I'm just saying it. It really is something when they say, you know, uh, someone's positive, you have to go wrestle around with them. And um, just, just thank you, I guess is all I could say. Thank you. The council has been very supportive and please know that it is appreciated. Thank you. All set, uh, Councilor Shiraza. Chief, two, one well quick set. question and a comment. Just curious, you mentioned accreditation. When do we expect to hear? Hopefully good news. So we've received the preliminary report. 
uh, or the preliminary assessment, we got that on the day that the assessors left, that uh, they were going to write a, a positive report, a positive recommendation, subject to a couple of uh, tweaks that they wanted and, and that they were by and large correct on. Uh, those tweaks we went to work on right away, uh, sending them documentation. Uh, DPW was very helpful. Remediation went under, uh, underway right away. Uh, and I don't know that they were back uh, in their home states before we were sending them photos and paperwork. The conference is scheduled for July. I doubt the conference is going to be live and in person. I'm uh, expecting any day now to hear that it's virtual in nature. Um, I do expect, I'm cautiously optimistic, that we will uh, we will more than pass with flying colors. That's great news, Chief. Thank you. And, and if you could, not necessarily budget comment, but some of the good things, you know, I think through the response that we've had over the last month or so, again, we talk about community policing and how important it is. And it's not just having you know, an officer walk the street, but some of the good things on how e even handed we've been in, in doing some of the governor's executive orders, you know, not, not looking to be heavy handed, you know, how our, our police have actually, you know, again, worked with some of the supermarkets, some of the businesses that are essential, again, work through the parks, again, in a very community, uh, again, collaborative way, as opposed to what you see across the country where you see officers arresting people for sitting in the park. I mean, I think if you could, because of what we're in, just, again, some of the good stuff that has happened and your department has been on the front, you know, and been in front of that, if you could, just a real brief, so people know that, again, community policing is actually still going on, and it's going on in a very good way. Sure. So not a day goes by when we don't underscore to kill them with kindness. And that doesn't mean that there aren't times where, you know, this past Saturday, I, I thought I was going to be calling the manager with a, sir, I'm sorry, we have another homicide in town. And, uh, you know, but for the skills uh, of the EMS providers and, and the, uh, uh, the hospital providers, we probably would have gone there. That work continues. And those folks that commit those offenses need to get arrested right. and they do. By and large, however, the uh, the messaging that we pass on to the officers here is that kill them with kindness. And just a couple of examples that come to mind, that driveway chalk art contest of last Friday, as silly as it might have sound, was a huge hit. WTIC radio ran with it. Fox 61 ran with it. The press ran with it. Uh, another example was when this started, I had gotten an email from a, a resident in town who wanted to know if we could lead and follow a birthday parade that she was going to have for her 12-year-old twins. And she was going to start it out of town in East Windsor. And I said, I don't think I can go there for you. But I did speak to our school resource officers that knew this family. And the school resource officers went over there and they maintained appropriate social distancing. And they chatted happy birthday to the kids on the PA. And they, uh, they actually brought the kids a couple of presents that they had acquired on their own. Um, and I can tell you, I don't know how it got funded, but it wasn't town funding that uh, was used to support those children to bring them a birthday present. And that's the caliber of the officers that you employ. Uh, you know, credit to the folks that have come before me and to all of you. Not a day goes by when I'm not impressed by their commitment. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Chief Fox? I don't know, Chief, if you want anything you want to, in closing, where you got the floor? Uh, no, sir. Uh, thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for the ongoing support. Please know that it is appreciated. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to item B, social services. So, Chris, I know Cynthia is on. Yes, uh, I would like to thank the Chief, yes. and we are moving on to Cindy. Cindy, you have the floor. And uh, if you'd like to say a couple of words, fine. Otherwise, we can go right to the questions. Okay. Good evening. I'm just going to echo um, Chief Fox as far as putting in the budget to meet the requirement and instruction of um, no increases unless they were contractual or benefit obligated. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. So, again, and Chris, I don't know before I open up there, any other comments or questions on this before I move it to the council? No, once again, uh, social uh, services touches all parts of our community from infants to our seniors. They do an incredible job. They have to balance the interests of, uh, of everyone in between that spectrum. 
with, you know, programs for food and tax credits and, you know, reaching out to all of our people. And of course, that has been made so much more difficult during this pandemic, but they've continued to do it again uh, in an exempt in an exemplary way. We thank them for it. And uh, I will just say, unfortunately, uh, given the pandemic and the curtailment of air travel, but we have been reviewing and we do have grant money for travel within the department. We have continued it uh, this past summer. Um, you know, Councillor Ungeyer and others and uh, our assistant town manager, uh, Kasha Persiello, went to the conference uh, uh, with the youth people in Washington. It was incredible. And we were going to have a council presentation, but for the fact um, we haven't been able to meet. But we will do that as soon as we can, because those are the type of things that really bring back knowledge and an ability for us to seek other resources to help our at-risk people and to assist our youth in very positive manner. So uh, with that, I would open it up to questions. Thank you, sir. Again, going right to left, Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'm all set at this time, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Muller. I'm all set at this time. Councillor Ungar. I just wanted to comment. I'm thankful that we have those grants and uh, we're getting all kinds of ideas and bringing them back to our town and then implementing them. So it's that's been a good success. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hemler. I have a few questions and it's this Go is ahead. my first budget. So just understand. Mine I too. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is under Enfield Transportation Service, there's a $7,000 other professional services. And that was uh, new to 2020. So I'm just wondering what that's for. Oh boy, that's an excellent question. I'll find <laughs> out. Um, like when I went just through all of, when I went through all the division um, budgets with the division heads, we did go through item by item. I just have to pull out the um, comments. And, I, and, and thank you, Cindy and uh, Councillor Hemler. I, I should have prefaced my remarks that um, the budgets are pretty extensive, especially Cindy's. Uh, yep. So what we will do if we don't have an on the spot answer, we will no certainly problem. get those to you within the next day or so in writing. We'll share it with the whole council so you have that information before deliberations. Okay, I have a couple others. So let me just tell you which ones they are and then you can get back to me. Sure. So hold on, I had them highlighted. Um, under youth services, there's another other professional services and that it, 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 right now is 112,000. So just wondering what exactly that is. Um, there's travel under the youth services. I, I'm, I'm thinking just like the police is probably not going to happen, but just curious what that is because it's 51,000. That's a lot of money. Um, there under under neighborhood services, there is a 20,000 under miscellaneous and I'm a bookkeeper. I hate miscellaneous expenses because you got to call it something. So if you could just find out what that is. I can answer some of your questions. Um, Go right ahead. As the youth services um, for the professional development and other professional services, those are grant funded items and largely contracted with professional services for evaluation of the grants. Um, okay. And so those are paid for by the grant and mandated by the grant. Um, as far as the 20,000 miscellaneous, that is money for the relocation fund. That is a requirement of state legislature that when somebody needs to be relocated, due to um, events beyond their control. For example, the fire on Church Street. Um, we re recently relocated a gentleman so that they could knock down the building that was really not habitable. So we have funds that are there in case we have to relocate people. Okay, so it might not necessarily be used, but it's there at your discretion. Okay. Correct. All right, and then we don't have to come. It. And I, I will just add, uh, Council Hemler, that uh, due to the innovation of the uh, director of public works, there, those expenses were required to make and we have to do it. We'll, we won't discuss it this evening, but he took steps to actually get a trailer so that we would not incur costs of storage so we could do it and not have recurring um, costs to outside vendors. And that was, again, a very innovative program uh, to try to limit the amount we have to spend in that area that we're statutorily required to do. So our staff is constantly looking for innovations that save money. And uh, we'll, we'll address that at another time. But thank you for your questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Bosco. 
All set. Thank you. Councillor Kiner. No questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sakala. I do have a couple of questions. And um, Cindy, these are going to be for you, or one's going to be for you, and then um, probably for you, Chris, as well. Um, so requested but removed from town manager was a grants manager for social services. Um, do you have an estimate? And I know it might be difficult to put a value on it, but do you have an estimate, Cindy, on what kind of money we are missing out on by not applying for these grants? And I do have a couple of secondary questions for you and Chris on that. I do not have a dollar figure because that there's so many different directions you can go in building on what we already have. Um, you can go towards philanthropy, um, federal grants, state grants, but it is hard to put a dollar figure on that. Okay. And so I guess my follow-up, and Cindy, you may not know the answer to this, but Chris, do we have a grants manager or a grant writer in another department that can help social services, or do we have the ability to do a grants manager for multi-departments? Meaning if we have one focused grant writer for the town or for several departments, can we sort of, can we make that person do grants for a bunch of different departments so we can help more than just say social services or more than just developmental services or the police department or whoever else uses grants? Because um, grant writing is pretty time consuming is my understanding. Um, and I don't know if it's something that we can have a person or if we have somebody in town already that can write grants for more than one department? That's a very excellent question. And I think probably some of the best grant writers reside in social services. And it takes, as you've said, an extra, uh, extraordinary amount of time to do it. And that's why we were exploring this position to really be able to leverage and to focus on it. Because I think the money that we get back would, would more than pay for the position. But given the fact we know it's over 118,000 currently, we, we weren't able to do it now, but what I had done earlier in the year is um, headed up by Kasha Perciello, our assistant manager. We put together a group and they had met preliminarily and it was from all of the different disciplines, police, and we had uh, town attorney, uh, public works and others together on it. We've been receiving a lot of grants from uh, our congressional uh, office of Joe Courtney. There's also a server that we've added that we now are receiving grants that are state, local, and philanthropic. So we're going to continue to do that with our committee um, as things open up, and then we'll revisit the formal position next year. But we certainly, I think, as you've seen over the last year, Councillor, applied for with Nelson, um, you know, Teresio in, in, in our, um, you know, as the assistant uh, manager, or I should say assistant director in development services and community development. We've obtained and applied for more grants and received more than I think in any time in the last 10 years. So we're going to continue that effort. We'll have to do it on a sort of an ad hoc basis, revisit this next year. But yes, we did put that together to bring everyone together so you could share it, share their knowledge, their, their expertise, and also the workload of doing it. So that is a priority. Right. So, I mean, I guess that's why I mentioned it, because I know Developmental Services and Nelson, they, they've gotten a lot more grants lately. And I think social services has probably been the same in the last couple of years. So I guess that's why it's a question or comment. It sounds like a grant manager or multi departments it sounds like a good idea. Maybe if it's not just a grant manager for social services, but if we have a grant manager that who knows what who they would be under, whether it be under the town manager's office or somebody else, but for multi discipline areas, it just it's a thought. It, it sounds like grant writing is really something that we need to continue to focus on. And if we can get somebody to do it in multi um, departments, it may sound like it um, saves some money for each individual department. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Council Mangini. Thank you, um, Cindy. Thank you for taking them and, you know, um, guiding the course for us. It's a big department. You're, um, piloting and doing a great job. This is now my rodeo, so I'm a little bit more comfortable with <laughs> the budget. I don't have any questions for you at this time, but thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. 
Councilor Riley. Um, I just want to say, uh, Cindy, I think you're doing a great job and the people that you have working for you right now are doing an incredible job uh, reaching out to the public at this time. Uh, so I wanted to thank you for that. Um, and then I just kind of had a comment about, I was kind of bummed that we couldn't get the new computer system up and rocking and rolling for you guys so you can track things better. And I was wondering if maybe um, there were any other options that maybe the state could provide for us or if we had any workarounds to help you guys out in some we're way going, if you had found anything. I'll interject that we're, we're hopeful, um, much to the sentiment that uh, Councillor uh, Sferraza had that we're going to be looking at these things we're trying to and, and Paul Russell has been really, really good about uh, finding those things and trying to do workarounds. We think that is essential, and we're going to try to hopefully be able to do that within our budget. But just given the time constraints and the reality we had to deal with, we had to you know, eliminate it for now. But we're going to work towards that and hopefully be able to come back to you with funding and be able to do it uh, after we adopt the budget. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it. If Sorry, I could just comment on the, the work of the staff has been phenomenal during this time. Um, and the timing couldn't be better for our new elderly services coordinator who's doing the personal outreach to all of the isolated seniors. And we're working closely with the food shelf to make sure that they're all being um, recognized and, and cared for. So thank you. Thank you, Council Sparazza. Um, really just a comment, not for Cindy, but um, I just want everyone to know that's watching this, that it's, it's um, what Councilor Sakala said, um, I couldn't agree with more. Grants are revenue sources where we don't have to use our tax dollars. I understand the grants come from tax dollars, but over the years, uh, we've availed ourselves of grants. And in the area of law enforcement, uh, sadly, in the state of Connecticut, our police department and no police department in Connecticut is eligible anymore for any of the federal DLG, Department of Justice grants that we have benefited from over the years. Uh, grants to buy DUI equipment, officers. And the reason we're not allowed to apply for federal grants anymore is because our state legislature has mandated that our police departments do not cooperate with the ICE officials, the ICE law enforcement people. Our state has prohibited that. And because we do, the federal government now doesn't allow us to apply for grants. So it's not specific to social services, but while we're talking about grants, there's a whole chunk of money that we're not gonna be having because our police officers wanna help our colleagues on the federal and state level. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You, you know, Cindy, not, not, to, not to sort of the belabor of the question on grants, but is there an opportunity, we've talked about this, you know, before, you know, this, this situation, maybe now is not a bad idea to continue to look where we can get uh, private sector grants. There's some, there still is money in the private sector, even through all this, some of the major corporations that donate a lot of money out to communities. Is there a way of maybe developing that through the United Way or even some of the, the corporate, you know, the larger corporate you know, looking to help out, you know, why we try to you know balance keep the budget steady until maybe we can hire that grant writer? Um, some of that I missed some of what you said with the cutting out, but we definitely are keeping our eye on grants. You know, I'll be working closely with Kasha and the committee looking at every day, you know, I get the notifications on state grants, federal right. grants. Um, the United Way is working with us on giving us some dollars towards helping families right now um, that are struggling. So there, there's, there's always a looking out for it. And you can creatively embed into any grant cost of things like the data collection needs. And so we can kind of fan that out. Um, over time. So, so if you didn't hear me, it was through the price. So there's still money in the private sector. We made that connection with some of the large corporations, you know, again, like a CVS or Walgreens, some of the mm -hmm. healthcare corporations, Cigna, who again, are, who are still donating, especially during this time, 
where again, if we're maybe we have to delay a little bit to have our own grant writer, you know, but to, to, to tap into those corporate groups that are giving money to help the community. Right. Yeah, I don't yep. know if we, I know we've talked about this, but maybe that's an avenue now we look at while we wait for that next piece. I mean, ongoing fund development is what you're, I think you're describing. Right. And we do a lot of that through our family resource center, especially um, with the Lego and um, um, uh, United Hauling. So yes, we're still looking into those types of resources. And if you could, Cindy, you know, anything you wanted to comment, you know, I know we're talking about the budget, but anything for your staff specifically that you want to highlight over the last two months that you feel, I mean, so people know that again, your folks are working and they're doing a lot of good stuff, but anything you want to highlight, I think is a nice opportunity as we are talking about your budget. Mm -hmm. Hey, these are some of the just um, shout outs you want to give to your staff about some of the things we've done for residents in the town. I know it's been a lot. It has been a lot. And each one of the divisions is um, there's commendable behavior on all sides. Um, we have our caseworker here at 110 High Street who is continuing to um, process applications for the rebate programs, renter rebates, um, you know, meeting them in the parking lot with the gloves, you know, spraying things with Lysol, keeping everybody clean, but keep um, processing for people. Um, providing activity baskets, door people from the early childhood center dropping them off at the doorstep so that kids have activities to do. Are you services bringing chalk um, to the youth in the uh, Thompsonville section to participate in the police department's sidewalk chalk competition? So little things like that go a tremendously long way. Mailing letters to the children, They're, they get so tickled pink to get a handwritten letter from their classroom teacher. Um, reaching out to our seniors, that uh, they really just like the phone call because they are feeling pretty isolated. So just asking them how frequently they want to be called, and they want to be called at least once a week. So all of the, all of the moving parts, our our transportation folks have been on the front line from day one, and they come into contact every day with the public. Um, and so they've been, it's been a hard road for some of them, but they're still doing it. People are getting to doctor appointments and grocery stores and dialysis treatment because they continue to provide that service. So, so good, good stuff. I mean, a lot of good stuff still going yeah. on, even in difficult times. And yeah. Again, just correct me. People still should be vote, uh, signing up for the LED tax credit. It's still open and we're still taking yeah. the applications, correct? Absolutely. Again, Every Monday through Friday. People, yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Anyone else have any questions? I'll open up again back to the council. Any other questions? Yeah, I just had one comment. Cindy, I just Cindy, I just wanted to commend you uh, for your youth, youth and family services. I've been dealing a lot with them over the years, and it's just been a pleasure. So thank you. They're a great group. Um, and thank you for the support that you're giving them and your guidance with the public service announcements. They've done a really good one. It hasn't been released yet, but it's um, the youth interviewing each other about the impact COVID is, COVID is having on them. And it's really like, you feel like you're kind of sitting on the outside, listening in to their conversation. It's really enlightening. It's amazing how they're all coming together and they're working so hard. It's uh, very commendable. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you, Cindy, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, and then we move on to item C, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I, I would yep. just like to say, in, in keeping with your sentiment of the job that all of these people are doing, I, I just would like to say that we are open for business. We're, we're gonna be putting to, uh, new signs out. You know, it just struck me and others and our director meetings, we meet three times a week, all of the staff and the directors virtually, and it says town hall closed. And it's it's sad and it's not true. The building is closed, but we're open for business and we're doing a lot. And we do our updates every Thursday. We'll have them tomorrow about building permits and marriage licenses and dog licenses. So we're going to be putting some new signs up around town hall and in town to say, yes, town hall, the building is closed, but Enfield is open. So people can call our numbers and a lot of people are doing it and we'll have reports after we are open for business and we're doing a lot of things so that when this passes, we'll be poised to have a resurgence, uh, you know, of our economic 
uh, spirit in Enfield. But we're going to be adding those signs shortly. And I would also like to say, Mr. Mayor, um, you know, it, it, we all know about police and EMS and our firefighters and those in the um, industries and at the stores who are who are out there and in social services. But, you know, one group of unsung heroes that people don't really think of that are essential is our water pollution control staff. And I want to tell you something. They are there day in and day out. And uh, I won't get into great detail, but that is a incredibly important uh, service to the town. And over the last year and a half. They have not only been doing their job, but we've been doing a major $36 million renovation. So anybody who's done something at their house knows, you know, when the bathroom's torn out and you still have to, you know, you have three or four kids and then you're doing the kitchen, but you still have to do meals. These poor uh, uh, individuals at the staff have been doing their job, plus trying to have and maintain uh, the service they got to provide while also doing that upgrade being completely discombobulated with having contractors and some subcontractors come onto the site. It, it's been a Herculean task and they've done it uh, admirably. And I will just say that, you know, then you add on the pandemic with having a lot of people come through and into their buildings and closed spaces. They've done a really mm-hmm. terrific job and all of our public works. We have a lot of other individuals and building and grounds and all of our custodians who are coming in to clean under these circumstances uh, who are at risk. And I know Donald's going to address it, but I, I just wanted to give a special shout out because we don't, we don't normally just think about water pollution control. And I just like to have, you know, taken this opportunity to commend them for, for the service they've been providing as well. And with that, Donald, noon, you're on. Welcome, hey. Donald. <clears throat> Welcome, Mayor. Just want to say go Bruins if we can still have a season. So <laughs> be nice. Well, maybe next year. Maybe, <laughs> maybe in August or well, something. I, mean, we'll to... I know we're, we're in public, but are you okay with Patriots moving down to Tampa Bay now. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'm not, a, I'm not a big footballer, except for the real football, which is soccer here. So um, I just want to say, again, uh, we did provide a pretty level uh, a level budget, and most of those impacts came from our 1029 uh, union raise. The lion's share of our staff is 1029. Also, our the municipal solid waste contract went up a little bit, but the bright side of that is we could have been – uh, locked in with Mira and, and some other ones where we would have been doubling and tripling that amount over the next, you know, maybe 15, 20 years would have been catastrophic to our budget. Uh, medical went up a little bit, but also this year, we're also including uh, water treatment for all of our boilers and chillers this year. And it, so we are still, with this budget, we are still able to do uh, water treatment. We will be still doing the temporary boiler at JFK and also the PCBs, which we're still mandated to do. Um, we, able to, we were able to do this by cutting and lowering other areas, such as you know coming up with something different for those Connex boxes that we purchased instead of renting out the public storage place every month or every year, which was, so now we, we have these two Connex boxes for when we do the, um, when the folks get kicked out of their places, we have, we store all the equipment here, we store all their home things here. I won't have to buy that. It's not going to be a recurring cost. So now that's done. That's where we're able to save uh, and a few other little things throughout the way. But we have we have balanced the budget and we still are achieving um, most of our goals through here. And we're still we're still picking up trash. We're still doing our thing and we're still doing our thing on a daily basis with all of our with all of our staff. So thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yep. Again, moving right to left. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Uh, I see that we're eliminating the HVAC mechanic. Yes, we 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 have had multiple interviews and just cannot find somebody that. Okay. Um, I I I think we're at we're at least we're at four or five interviews that we've had and they just have not been successful. Uh, most of the folks that are willing to take that position now are um, fresh out of school and they're kind of no new construction. What we have requires a lot more experience because we have a lot of older furnaces and we've had incidences where we've brought people there and they, they kind of looked at it with, uh, they didn't know what it was. I mean, so how, you know, that's really not going to behoove us to, to have that wig in when Butchie's going to be there uh, constantly with them. So we contracted out some of that work anyway, so it just didn't make okay. any sense. Okay. Okay. So I guess we're probably going to be discussing this in CIP. But the transfer station and the design there, is that a CIP issue or is that a DPW issue? 
Uh, that's going to be a CIP issue. Uh, Chris, if you want to keep address that. No, I, I think it's, it's clearly both, but where it would be addressed would be in the CIP. And clearly, we know there's a need. We had a very fine presentation by Doug McSellen earlier in the year, and we certainly want to be able to move forward and address it. But we just couldn't feel, given uh, the choices we had to make and the sacrifices in this budget, uh, to address it now. So, And I, I guess for me, with the solid waste, and we're kind of in low on the new ordinance, and every time I go by the six and seven can houses, it just, it, it, is there anything we can kind of do education wise to really start to get people down this road of understanding that we are not an unlimited source of picking up their trash when they fold up all their cardboard and they put it in the gray barrel? I know that's more. I know I know that's more of a rhetorical question, but certainly I think education, like in so many other areas, is, is important. And Donald will be thinking about that so we can best communicate it to our residents going forward that it's in all our best interest to reduce those kind of uh, burdens yeah, we, on the I system. Mean, and once we, we pass that ordinance, I mean, we're going to go through an education program, but maybe we could start the education a little bit sooner so that they're not behind the curve and surprised when all of a sudden you know, we're only, you know, doing a certain amount of garbage pickup. So I, I really would, you know, I'd like to sooner or later start to get people trained and conscientious about really what's going on and, and what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Muller. All set. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hemler. I'm all set. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. All set, thanks. Councilor Kiner. No. Councilor Sakala. Um, I don't know that I necessarily have specific DPW questions. Um, I was talking to Donna about the transfer station issue specifically, and um, I know we're going to have some roof and road referendum questions as well. So um, Chris, we're gonna deal with those later. Yes, we provided some information at the request of uh, Councilor Susak, and I think um, there will be follow-up. We're sharing that with the entire council. And I, I think all of you should you know, weigh in and ask for additional information and we can talk about that uh, when we do our deliberations on the 5th and the 6th. Okay. So at this point, um, you know, thank you for all the work you guys are doing, Donald, especially in uh, the situation we're in right now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mangini. Yeah, and again, I think this is more of a CIP question, but I'm going to throw it out there and just tell me if I'm in, being inappropriate. The Hazardville windows, window walls, whether we do a CIP, uh, funding on, on this project, or if public works can get out there, take the air conditioners that are falling out of the windows, secure the windows. I, I look at this as a public safety issue, and I'm not sure if that's even something that uh, public works would be in, interested or um, destined to uh, address, but it is definitely a safety issue. When those air conditioners are literally falling out of the window, um, someone could potentially climb through the window or have the air conditioner fall on somebody's head. It, it's really not acceptable. And I'm throwing it out there because it says $2.465 million for a project to address just those windows and window walls. I, I don't know if that's even something that's realistic. Well, I will, I will just state that that was a preliminary cost, but because it isn't in the budget, I won't spend too much time on it, but um, your point is well taken. We always will do our maintenance and public safety is first. So public works will ensure the safety of those in the building. We will do the maintenance, but as we all know, and why Donna, I think is insistent upon a, um, you know, continued referendum on roofs and on roads is because it costs a lot more to patch and it costs a lot more to fix a roof and the repairs outweigh in the long run. So what we're trying to do right now is just, you know, 
hold the course and we know it's going to be more expensive in some circumstances, public safety will come first, but for roofs and in, you know, for instance, I won't belabor it, but when you have leaks, we have to go there on an emergency basis. We have to pay contractors. You get mildew, you get a whole litany of things that cascade from uh, the fact that we don't do the full new roof or a full new road and we're doing potholes and we we're worrying about intersections that are unsafe. So we're trying to balance it this year, but, your point is well taken, but public safety always comes first and public works uh, does a very good job. We are very responsive to our residents in that regard and we'll continue to maintain that, um, you know, until we can address the long-term solutions. And I do want to say thank you, Donald, and all your staff, you know, all the workers for being so diligent in, in servicing the town <laughs> residents so well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Riley. I just want to say thank you for keeping the, gar the picking up the garbage and putting up the signs and um, roping off the playgrounds. Um, you guys are doing a great job within the circumstances. Um, I'm looking forward to deliberations because um, it's definitely important that we talk about the roofs and the roads um, and all the other projects that we have. And I think it'd be great if we could come up with a list that we could put with the budget more towards the end of it, when we're done with it, of projects of in magnitude order of what we'd like to have done if money or funding comes available, you know, like a tick list. So, you know, whatever's most important, if we have funding, then maybe we could do this or, you know, something that, like that. I will just interject, that's an excellent idea. And our deputy, one of our directors that we hired, Jeff has been doing almost predominantly that mission yeah. with Kasha Perciello and the director. Uh, we did, as I said in my presentation, have submissions of almost $16.9 million for CIP. We are prioritizing them and we are, we are hopefully going to, and this year, you know, uh, set us off course a bit, but we're uh, addressing those things that we have an obligation to do statutorily or, or you know, that are really paramount in public safety. And we will be, we had that goal setting a, a couple months back, which I thought was excellent. And we will be compiling the list and we'll, we'll uh, hopefully get back on track and we will try to reach each and every one, but we will prioritize them. That was a big thing when I, when we've been hiring people to say, look, we need a list. We need to be able to do maintenance and take care of what we have to get a longer life use out of them. And, you know, whether it's painting in a building or a roof or a boiler or any of those things, we're doing that counselor. And I thank you for the comment because we put a lot of work into it and we're not going to get blown off course for too long and we'll get back to that. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Count Councilor Sparazza. All set. No question. Donald, you don't have to, I know you probably don't have this answer tonight, but maybe in the next few weeks, just curious how we ended up with the snow budget. Um, we were, yeah, sorry, well, I mean, we're definitely ahead. I don't. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I can send the report to Chris, and Chris can uh, send it out what the end of the year was so far. No, I appreciate Mayor. Don't Mayor. Don't it. don't don't jinx us. We had snow flurries <laughs> today, so please. Sorry, I got to ask the question. <clears throat> Thank you very, much. Uh, Donald. Again, just I want to make sure you you as, as I know your folks have been doing a lot of work. So anything again through this last two months that you would like to highlight or choose to comment on. That you feel it's just so the public knows that again a lot of good stuff is still happening and your folks are delivering on a lot of different things so i don't know i just want to give you the floor to give you a chance you know yeah, i i sincerely appreciate the time to to do that again through this whole um you know beginning of the pandemic and all the way through it we've been still maintaining uh status quo here we're again as Councilor Riley said we're still picking up the trash uh, we're still responding to our sewer, uh, our, our construction still going on, our our breaks, our pump station issues. We're still responding to those. Again, most of the folks don't realize again when they flush their toilet, they don't realize again what happens on you know on the end use and how much work that goes into that. So we're still doing that. Uh, B and G is still out there. We're still constructing things for um, all throughout schools and all and throughout other areas. Our custodians are doing. Um, they're, they're really out on the front lines too, that again, unlike EMS uh, or again, like police, but we're still there having to clean up after these things. We have people 
throughout town that again we're we're always in front and we're always doing it and and we're always there so we really appreciate the fact that we can still do that and everybody is 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 keeping a good head about themselves and we're, and we're, we're trudging forward and we're and we're making progress so it's really important for that. again i want to thank all my staff for doing so thank you sir well said thank you anyone thank else have any questions or comments Chris, I mean, so in closing, Chris, I know uh, this will, we will be just curious on for the public, will, it be, will we have an announcement form when they, they know they can submit questions? Just want to curious how it works. Yes. Uh, previously, we, we talked about that. The, the public comment will advertise it heavily um, on all of our websites when the public comment period opens. Um, I think it's noted, let me look here in the resolution that we read, there was so much, but I think it will open, uh, let's see, the virtual hearing itself will be April 29th, uh, and you can submit testimony. I think it's going to open soon, perhaps, I, I'm not quite sure, Mayor, by tomorrow, but, and then it will be open until 5 p.m. on Monday, April 27th, so that we can go through them. And uh, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, last year we had, a really good and robust response at the community conversation. We had a lot of people come in. It was very interactive and we had all the directors that were there and we were able to answer uh, taxpayer questions. The public hearing is much more limited. Uh, individuals are allowed to come, but it's not a back and forth question and answer. This year we had had a plan to combine them uh, and try to expand upon that. We weren't able to do it. So I'm hoping that more people perhaps being at home and maybe bored We'll listen to this. We'll look at the budget. We'll look at my presentation. And as I said, I, I sincerely hope we'll have a, a greater response of the public so that we can have input and, th and then we'll answer their questions at a later time. So uh, that's my hope. And we're going to push it as, uh, you know, as hard as hard as we can. And hopefully we'll get a lot more people to, you know, uh, look at the budget and be involved and understand where their tax dollars go. Okay. So this concludes the meeting. Again, uh, again, great job by our IT folks. Paul Russell, make sure I get his name right for the, the record. And Deb McCarthy, again, who has helped us with virtual meetings. Again, this meeting will air tomorrow on ETV Channel 16, tomorrow evening, and it's also available live on YouTube. Again, thank you for every, all the staff who have been on. Thank you for all the town counselors who have been on. Again, knock on wood, this meeting went fairly successful virtually. Hopefully we're looking forward to the time where we can get back in person. But again, uh, nice job by everyone. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. By Deputy Mayor Sudak, second by Council Mayor Gini. All those in favor by aye. 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 Good night, aye. everyone in town. Stay well, aye. and we'll talk to you soon. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.